What we're going to talk about today for just a little bit anyway is fret fall off. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Am I talking about you, Marcus Morgan? Are you the one that's gonna get this guitar? Nice and, nice and easy. Guitar that was abandoned for two years is a miracle guitar. So we're gonna get that guitar down to Marcus in Atlanta, Georgia. I know how this guitar is gonna be used now to bring the best amount of impact to this world, and I'm gonna do it in honor of Jeff. Volunteers in the United States work alongside the people of Vietnam, getting the wheelchairs unpacked and organized. Hey, it's still in tune. Slightest little, slightest little buzz down in here. What we're going to talk about today for just a little bit anyway is fret fall off. And what that is is that this upper register of frets, we're going to take that down just a little bit like a, like kind of a gradual slope, only not near this pronounced, just the very slightest gradual slope up so that as I come up here, that we don't have any buzz whatsoever. Uh, so to start, or maybe what I should say is before we even look at considering doing that, I need to pull out this guy that I made just a little while back. I'm gonna bring this out. I'm going to first make certain that my entire fretboard is level. So I've gotta use my Trusty, oh yeah, no, we got a lot of give on that right now. Oh, wait a minute, nope, nope, nope. Ha ha ha, silly Steve. I made this for a 25 and a half inch neck. This is a 24 and three quarter inch neck, which was the original. So that means this is not gonna work. So I need to make a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale very quickly on this. But let me just describe for a moment what I'm doing here. I am going to use this to make sure that my fretboard is absolutely level. Once it's absolutely level, then I'm going to check the strings again. And if there's any buzz, and I'm going to check to see if there's any frets whatsoever that are a little taller, have a little rock to them that I need to adjust. Uh, I may have to do a complete fret leveling, but I doubt it. I don't think I do. I have done the rocking test and it seems to be pretty solid. So I'm just going to look at doing a little bit of fret fall off, which means I'm going to angle this down just a little bit on these frets. Now we're talking a very, very slight amount. We're not talking this steep curve. I don't want to get rid of my fret metal. I, I want to keep as much of that as I possibly can. So we're not talking very much at all. Just the very slightest little kind of sanding an angle upwards slightly, this side up to this side to the full height of that. And that just gives me a little bit more clearance so that I can get these strings really close to that fretboard. So in the meantime, Let's check out what I have to say about this. Well guys, a little fun for me. Now I'm gonna see what I can get accomplished on my little telly here. See if that'll come together. First thing that I gotta do is put the tuning machines in. Personally, I really like these Schaller mini tuners. Uh, I do also like this Brazil. So I pretty much stick to those as much as I can.
Not the prettiest, but it is functionally just fine. So I can see, let's see here, as I was doing this, I can see that there is too much relief in the neck. The neck is still bowed like this. So I'm going to give it just a slight tighten here. That was about an eighth of a turn, no more than that. It still has a little too much relief. I'm gonna give it just a little bit more. And uh, at this point, I do have full tension on my strings. Um, I will be taking the strings off. Check it again, but right now, I'm just checking where I'm at with this. I will take those strings off because in order to in order to do the, okay, I still got some relief there, but now I'm going to take the strings off. Um, and I should probably see it kind of flatten out a little bit more because the string tension will be off. So I got to take the strings off to do the sanding. So obviously the string tension won't be there when I'm doing the sanding on the frets. So we'll take off that string tension. But I just brought it down a little bit. I wanted to check right away to see where it was at and and you know what i also not only can i not find my tape i can't find my gun for turning these my my ratchet for tune for these tuners but thankfully these are locking tuners so i actually don't have to turn them too far before i can take them off because i don't wrap them around more than once here All right, there we go. Strings are off. Where am I at? Okay, there is just the slight, oh boy, maybe not. Slightest little bit of relief there yet. So I'm gonna give it just a, just the tiniest bit more. Okay, that was maybe a 16th of a turn. Okay, I am looking very flat there. All right. So now I'm gonna do a quick rocker test with it. Well, the rocker test shows that 9, 12, 15, uh, 20, and 21 are all a little bit on the high side. Now, uh, 9 and 12 aren't really too bad. In fact, they're pro almost negligible. Uh, but actually, uh, it was either 20 or 21, one of those two. I think it was 21. That was definitely higher than the other ones. Um, I mean, significantly enough that I'm like thinking, hmm, maybe that is the culprit. So uh, I am, like I said, I'm gonna do just a little bit of fall off on it, and then I'm gonna have to polish them back up. Because this is a 1016 compound radius, I am gonna go with a 16 down here on this end. And I am first, before I do any of that, I'm gonna put some black marks on my frets with just kind of a sharpie type marker here. I'm doing this so that I can see how much I actually take off and where I'm taking off at. Now again, I don't want to take off too much. The idea here is not to get rid of very much material of these frets. I want to keep as much material on there as possible and I said uh, 15, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this one here was just a little bit on the high side also. And that one I'm gonna keep higher. So I wanna do a little bit more sanding on this end than I do up on this end. 
But I want to, I want this 15 to be about, about the last place that I, that I do this. So uh, I'll probably lower my uh, pickup here just a little bit first. Okay, I've taken that pickup out so that I don't hit it here. Um, I am actually using just a 320 grit on the sandpaper. I'm gonna try that first because I don't want to do too much, as I said. Um, but I, especially this, this fret here and this fret here, this one was the highest, this is the next. So I'm just gonna start down here and And it is taking more, it's taking more off of this one than this one right away. I'm not seeing any being taken off of this one yet. Now that I've recrowned the frets after doing a little sanding, I am using linseed oil on the fretboard. With a with an Indian rosewood fretboard, I do not need to put any clear coat, polyurethane, etc., on it, uh, but it should be treated. And so, linseed oil. So Marcus Morgan, every now and then, treat it with some linseed oil. Just a little bit of linseed oil is all you need and just let that soak in into the wood nourishes the wood helps it so it's not going to crack or anything uh, and it looks really glossy right at the moment but if i give this a day to soak in it will just uh, be a nice nice lustrous wood if you're looking kind of close you can see just a little bit how these screws from when i screwed this in before indented into this uh, duplicolor clear coat and that's a little bit of what I was saying now you're not you know with this screwed in you, you're not going to see it you won't notice it but what it does tell me is that this clear coat is a bit softer than some of the other stuff that I've used so again it's not going to be a problem for Marcus as he plays his guitar it'll be just fine but it does show that it's a little bit less durable so Marcus I guess here's my thought is that so Marcus, I guess here's my thought, is this should be just fine, should be decently durable and all, uh, but it is softer than some of the other stuff that I use for clear coat. Um, so what I would just say, hey, if this really gets uh, uh, to a place where you're not happy with it, I guess we can see about re- doing it and using something else besides the duplicolor. Otherwise, you know what, I think it looks good. Uh, it's just not, uh, it's not everything I would want it to be for a clear coat. I think it's still gonna be just fine. You know what I mean? So I get really picky with stuff like this. So <clears throat> I guess we'll see where you're at with it. Uh, I want it to be the best that it can possibly be. I believe I've got this set up pretty stinking good now. I've got really low action on it and it's intonated. So our intonation is good. got a guitar. Well now that's playing well and it's intonated I can actually play something on it. Thank you. 
I just really like the the sound differences between the two. Let's see. Might be able to pull up just a little bit this humbucker. Bring it up just a little bit higher here. One of the things that you want to do is try and balance out so you you got your balance between the humbucker and the single coil where you want them. Sounds pretty decent there. So I just need to do the uh, rear plates on there. I've got to do a little bit of touch-up sanding on the neck here yet, and then polish it up, get it ready to go. Still got to figure out, am I mailing it or am I driving it? Gas prices are so high right now, so I'm not sure about that yet. But hey guys, I am really excited. I'm gonna finish this up, but I am just pumped about this idea of this black guitar over here. And doing the auction and seeing if I can use that as kind of a miracle guitar to bring wheelchairs over to Vietnam for these people. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? And then, you know, I'll take the camera with me. Maybe I can find some guitar stuff while I'm over there. But uh, the point of that will be just to show what one guitar uh, can do with the sale and how you can make something like that go for something so much more uh, valuable. You know, this guitar is awesome, it's valuable, but how cool would it be if that guitar would allow me to get some wheelchairs to Vietnam that people could be mobile and get around? Wouldn't that be awesome? Help me out with that. Hey, you guys, you can check out my Patreon page too if you want to help support with that. I'd appreciate it. Always, always, please like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. That's free. And it really helps me a lot. Thanks, guys. Hey, keep fighting for joy. We'll see you next time. I think it's done. I am just going to have to get the address for Marcus and send it to him. And Marcus, would you please try and record yourself opening the guitar and maybe doing some... Yeah, play it for a little bit for us. We'd like to hear it because I'm sure you're better than I am with guitar. I looked into the prices. I realized it's going to be like $450 if I were to drive down there. save money for going to Vietnam to bring those wheelchairs over. So...